why do most studio monitors look so blah? I mean, I know they're supposed to be utilitarian and they're supposed to sound flat, but are they supposed to look flat? Things are finally changing. The JBL 104s are not just about looks, but the sound surprised me and put a smile on my face as soon as I started listening to them at home. cost $150 for a pair. So if you're looking for studio monitors that are in that price range, you need to be looking at these. But there are a few things that you should consider before clicking the buy button. First, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up with my videos on music production tips, gear reviews, and tutorials. A couple months ago, I saw these online and I was like, there's no way that these could sound decent. Then, surprise, surprise, the JBL team sent me a pair to try out. I've heard great things about JBL from other producers, but I've never really tried them myself. I've owned several studio monitors over the years, even the Yamaha NS10s that you see in all of the pro studios. I really need to get those out of storage. But for the past two weeks, I've just used the JBL 104s. They have a 4.5 low frequency driver and a 0.75 high frequency driver. They're powered by a 60 watt internal amp outputting 30 watts to each of the speakers. Like other powered monitors, you just run your quarter inch balanced or RCA cables from your audio interface or your computer straight into the back of one of the speakers. Then you run a speaker wire to the other one. In the front, you've got a volume control and a headphone jack. When you plug in the headphones, the speakers actually mute automatically, which is a pretty nice feature. Okay, let's talk about the design. These look fantastic. Honestly, they look even better in person. I know design is subjective and maybe you won't love the design, but I think it's refreshing to see a company making efforts with monitors. And to me, they got it right, especially considering the look of competitors at this price point. And these are heavier than they look, uh, about 10 and a half pounds, but they're kind of small. Now, JBL advertises these as portable, but if you think you can throw these in a backpack with your keyboard and computer, think again. I kind of find them a little too heavy and bulky for that. Still, they're much easier to carry around than other speakers at this price range. The JBL 104s are acoustically designed to sit on your desk. That's something to consider for your setup, but I kind of think that's where most people are gonna put them anyway. They've got a nice rubber base, a hard plastic body, with a metal grill, everything feels tight and well built. Okay, well, how do they sound? I was surprised at the sound coming out of these as soon as I plugged them in. It literally put a smile on my face. The details in my mixes came shooting out at me with really good highs and mids. Now, I typically mix with a subwoofer, so immediately I was like, Where's the bass? I did miss the low end when using the 104s alone, but when I added my sub to them, wow, things sprang to life. If you mix music where sub frequencies are super important, I'd recommend pairing these with a sub. JBL makes the LSR310S, which is $350. That's kind of typical for an entry level sub. Now, I'm not a sound engineer, so I won't pretend to rattle off the specs like I understand it all. But that really isn't the point, is it? If you're able to mix adequately at home with these, what else matters? Check out the mix I made with the song in this video, mixed on the 104s alone. I didn't use any other speakers or my other monitors for reference. If you're interested in buying these, I'll put a link in the description of the video. If you've got a question about them, leave it in the comments below. Keep making the music you love, and I will see you guys later.